Hi, my name is Ed Loftus. I'm a gastroenterologist at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, and I specialize in the care of patients with ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. And I wanted to talk to you today about using nutrition or diet uh, in the setting of inflammatory bowel disease. This is a very controversial topic. Uh, you'll, if you do a search on the internet for diet and IBD, you'll find some really interesting data, but also a lot of conflicting data. The problem is it's actually very hard to do studies to, to analyze a specific diet to know whether or not it's helpful for treating ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. Um, and also questionnaires uh, asking patients about their diet are fraught with bias because pe people can't even remember what they ate the day before, let alone what they were eating before they were diagnosed with these conditions. So it's a very, very difficult area to study. And furthermore, there aren't many funding sources for this kind of a research because there isn't a specific company sponsor for this uh, type of study. So it's difficult to study, but over the years I've talked to a lot of patients and I've heard um, several themes that have been developed, uh, I would say, and let's just talk about each of those themes. So again, my recommendations for changing your diet aren't firm recommendations, but they're suggestions for things that you could try to see if they'd be helpful. So first of all, um, lactose-free diet, especially if you're having a flare of your condition, uh, consider going off all dairy products. Lactose intolerance is very common in the general population, especially as we get older. That becomes more and more common. And then if you have a condition like ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease on top of that, that can magnify the symptoms. So during flares, you should eliminate dairy and you should really be strict about it. You should eliminate milk, um, ice cream, uh, soft cheeses, hard cheeses plus or minus, but uh, you should really consider eliminating those during flares. And then as your symptoms settle down, you could gradually reintroduce those to see if you can tolerate them. Uh, the second theme that you could explore is sugar. Multiple studies suggest that too much sugar in your diet um, can actually worsen the symptoms of inflammatory bowel disease. And if you think about it, uh, sugar tends to cause an overgrowth of bacteria in the intestine and bacterial overgrowth can lead to symptoms of increased gassiness and bloating. And this is paradoxical in many patients with IBD because they tend to gravitate towards easily digestible foods and these tend to be high carb foods. And so you're actually probably doing the exact opposite of what you need to be doing. So if you do not have a stricture in your intestine, you should be eating more fruits and more vegetables and you should be going away from the high carb foods um, even though they're quote easily digestible, unquote, they may be leading to bacterial overgrowth, gassiness and bloating. So that's another thing to explore. Now there are some extreme low carbohydrate diets out there. There's the specific carbohydrate diet. Um, it's an interesting diet. I have had some patients who have tried it and gained benefit. It's a very difficult diet to follow and many patients can't maintain calories on that diet and they lose too much weight when they can't afford to lose weight. Um, so something to consider, but um, again, not a firm recommendation. The third theme that you could explore with diet is uh, red meat. Uh, there's a suggestion that too much animal fat might uh, worsen your symptoms of either Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. So uh, cutting back on red meat, especially higher fat containing red meat, might be a good idea. In general, patients seem to tolerate chicken and white fish well. Pork is iffy. Um, and I would say that uh, shellfish is iffy as well. But if you're going to go with meat, I think chicken and, and white fish are probably uh, your best bets. Um, so these are things you could explore. If you have a sense that uh, certain foods might worsen your symptoms, one thing you could try to do is uh, create a food diary. So in one column, write down all the foods you ate that day. And in the second column, write down your symptoms. And if you keep track of this diligently, over weeks or months, you might be able to start seeing some themes and consider eliminating certain diets. Now, in some cases, we'll have patients who actually have a specific 
allergy to a food. Again, a controversial point, but if you think there's a sense of that, food allergy testing can be done. This is also a controversial area because there are different types of doctors who recommend different types of food allergy testing. Here at Mayo, we tend to start off with skin testing for the food allergies, and if those are positive, we'll move to blood tests. If patients are interested, we will sometimes refer them to an allergist immunologist to explore food allergies as a possibility. So it's an exploration. Uh, think about uh, making some changes in your diet. Uh, not one diet works for everybody, but it's definitely worth exploring. Thank you.